Have you ever heard the saying, it's not what you know, but who you know? Yeah, let's think about that for a second. What's up everybody? Ruben Davis, Future Doc here. And in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how to get into medical school with a low GPA and or low MCAT. Now, if you were someone like me who struggled in undergrad um, and who struggled with the MCAT having to take it multiple times, then getting into med school might seem like some far away unachievable dream. But I'm here and I'm making this video to encourage you and to show you that that's simply not the case. One, I'm living proof and there are a bunch of living proofs walking around today who had low stats and still got into medical school. And I guarantee that for some of them, they used some of the methods that I'm gonna talk about in this video, all right? And so let's circle back around to that quote. It's not what you know, but who you know. And why is that quote relevant to getting into medical school? Because when you have low stats, one of the most important aspects of getting into medical school is relationships. And I mean that in various different ways. So firstly, the fact that you have low stats automatically shows that you, you need some outside help. I know I had to realize that for myself, after <laughs> taking it, the MCAT for the third time, just, you know, the first two times kind of being stubborn, just like, ah, uh, I don't wanna pay all this money. Um, you know, I could just do it myself. I'll just, you know, study a little bit harder. And I did study a little bit harder, but it still wasn't enough. I didn't know, I didn't know what I didn't know, you know, and that's where relationships come in. That's where when you have tutors and mentors to show you what you don't know, you know, you can improve, you can start to grow, you can get over that hump. And so that's the first way. Developing those outside relationships that can help build, you know, on your knowledge base, whether it's a tutor, whether it's a uh, mentor who's helping you out with application, because you could be someone who, maybe you have some good stats, but you're still not getting in because your application isn't showing the best version of you, right? For various reasons, maybe your essay isn't as good, you know, all those different reasons, and where you still need some outside help to look at that application for you and help you get over that hump. So developing relationships, get a tutor, get a mentor, you know what I'm saying? Realize that you need help and seek that help. Let go of whatever pride you may have, let go if you're feeling ashamed of asking for help, just let all that go. Because at the end of the day, we wanna get into medical school and we gotta do what we gotta do to get there. Secondly, you wanna to try to find a way to develop a relationship with a medical school, any medical school really, um, but in particular, especially if you wanna to go to this particular medical school. Now, it's some schools offer admissions advising. Now, this is a very rare thing. Most schools, especially the most top competitive schools, don't offer it just because everybody and their mama be reaching out and will be trying to get that help. So, you know, a lot of the competitive schools don't, but some of the smaller ones do. Um, and so you just gotta find those schools. I tried to find like a list, but I couldn't really find the list. I was gonna link it down in the description, but I couldn't really find that list. So you'd have to really just look at the schools that you're interested in and just really go through their websites and see if they have any sort of admissions advisors where you can sort of start to develop that relationship with the school, develop that relationship with an admissions program, an admissions team, so that they can get to know you beyond just what your grades are, right? And what that what they'll do is, and was sort of what happened for me, I got connected with someone in, in an admissions program and they were able to guide me through the steps I needed to take to make myself more competitive. So I'm showing them like, okay, I don't have, uh, you know, the stats. So, okay, you need to do another program. All right, I don't, I, my MCAT's not that good. Okay, you need to take it again. You need to do something different. You need to get another class. You need to get some more shadowing hours. You need to get some more of this. So developing that relationship just gives you sort of that though, those keys to success on how to get there. Now, this is not easy. I will say it's not easy developing a relationship with an admissions team, but you can do it. Other ways that you can do it without like, directly emailing someone, because you could directly just email someone on admissions and if they get back to you, they get back to you. Maybe you'll get lucky and you'll find someone who's really nice, who has the time to offer you that, a that guidance to look over your application and help you out. Then you start to develop that relationship and over time, maybe they're the ones that advocate for you when your application comes up and they start to talk about it. They're the ones that advocate for you, right? So try to develop that relationship there. Another way to do that is through through um, higher education programs, so, um, or post baccalaureate programs or master's programs, whatever. So you could do a post back at 
you know, a school that you want to do. A lot of these pro uh, programs, whether it's a postback or a master's program, some of them have sort of pipeline programs, if you will, where if you get a certain GPA, you get a certain whatever, you get an automatic um, interview for their medical school, right? Now you have to perform very well in these programs, right? Because I think, for example, Drexel University has a master's program similar to this, but you have to get at least a 3.5 on the MCAT. I mean, not no, 3.5 GPA, I think throughout the program and a 510 on the MCAT. And also another caveat is that this sort of delays, you know, your admission, but at the same time, it's a, it might be that, that way you need because you have some of those lower stats. It might be what you got to do. You know, you don't have to take a program anyway, more than likely you might have to just work, you know, different things like that. But those are ways to help you develop relationships with the school so that they get to know you as a person. You get to prove yourself academically where it's like you struggled in undergrad, but that was just because, you know, I was figuring myself out. I was learning blah, blah, you know, whatever, whatever might happen. You might have had a tragedy happen while you were in undergrad that really impacted your, you know, ability to get through. I um, mean, that's another aspect if you had to have a tragedy, like the way you put that on your applications is really sort of demonstrate that, you know, overcome that, that's something as well, where you, one of those tutor or mentor relationships can be the one to help you through that. So developing relationships, right? I think, you know, I've said a lot of things, but at the, at the bottom of it is relationships, relationships with people who can give you the information that you need to know to get into medical school. Um, tutors who can help you improve on your uh, scores and your exams, your grades, all that type stuff, um, you know, and just, you know, just a relationship to help you take those steps to make yourself more competitive to get into medical school. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you smash the like button, leave a comment down below. If you feel like this is helpful, if you're someone who are starting to develop that relationship and you have some advice for other people, you know, comment that down below and make sure you subscribe to the channel, man. And for more content like this about getting into med school, what it's like being in med school, MCAT, all that type stuff, I'm gonna be putting out some more videos, um, you know, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Future Doc out.